Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today I am putting together a custom A Gallo watercolor palette. I already own the Natural 24 palette. I've had it since the spring and I've been using it pretty much every day that I've painted, and I absolutely love it. The colors are so vibrant and rich. They're muted, they're earthy, there's jewel tones. It's pretty much got everything in it that I could ever want in a palette. There are a few colors though that are missing from my particular style. And so I just wanted to fill in a few of those holes with some extra single pans from A Gallo. And because I love using these paints so often, I want to use them together, I felt it would be the most convenient if I were to just simply put them into a palette of 36 wells so that I could not only continue to add to my collection and fill in the empty spaces, but keep everything in one place. I'm pretty simplistic when it comes to my setup. I don't like to have things scattered in multiple palettes. I like to have all my favorites in one place. And so I'm going to take this order from Jackson's and put it all together for you so you can watch. As you can see, it took a little while for me to decide how I wanted to lay everything out. Once I had my setup, I started to put things into the pan. I pretty much followed the A Gallo Natural 24 setup, starting with the buff titanium, moving through the yellows, the oranges, the reds, but then I switched things around a little bit and I started with the blues and finished out that middle row with those colors. And then my final row ended up being greens, my black, and my slate gray. I love how it turned out. The colors just look so, so lovely together and so inviting. I love having a neutral color palette for my pieces. I know that you can mix these colors easily with just a basic color palette of your vibrant bright colors. And a lot of people have excellent results with those things. But the way my brain works, I get really inspired by the color palette that I'm using. I like to be able to see the colors that are available to me. And it's much easier for me to imagine the mixing possibilities when I have at least a starting point of colors that I know I love that are already in the mood and in the vibe that I like to paint with. So having this naturally based color palette just fits perfectly with my creative practice. The colors that you see here that I've swatched are buff titanium. It's a semi-opaque color. And then the next one is Gerocyte. It's a transparent yellow. It's beautiful. I love using it. Then after that, you have a golden ochre, slightly less transparent. And then the final yellow is a Moroccan ochre, which is I would call it semi-opaque. After that, we have raw sienna. It's a very subtle orange color. I love it for autumn landscapes. And next to it, we have a castile orange. It's beautiful. It's a very rich, highly pigmented color. I get a lot of mileage out of it. Next is the color that I love. I just don't use it very much because it is not as light fast, but it is Rose Matter. It's a very transparent, deep purpley red color.
this color right here is one of my absolute favorites from A Gallo. It didn't originally come in the palette, but I just, I had to buy it when I first bought the Natural 24 color palette. It's called Dragon's Blood, and the name itself was inspiring to me. Obviously, my love of fantasy is being touched here, but it's such a beautiful granulating color. And even though it's not as light fast, I still use it quite a bit just because I love the effects of it. Next to that is Quinacridone Chestnut. That is my light fast red color and I love using it. This color right here is Ercolano Red. It's a very rusty red color. Next to that is a very opaque red called Hematite. I love, love this color. If you see a lot of overlap in these reds and oranges so far, I would say that you're correct. The earlier colors that I've already painted are a little more transparent, and these later colors are more opaque, and I love having the variety of opacity in my color palette, depending on you know which layer this color is going in, what look I'm going for. I like to paint in layers quite a bit, and so I'll typically use those more transparent colors early on, followed by um, contrast from those opaque colors. This color right here is Sartorio Red. It's a very light brownish red color. And next to it is Burnt Umber Brownish, also another one of my favorites. I use it in probably every forest painting that I do. What I love about this color is that it's a beautiful brown on its own, but when you mix it with other colors, you can give it a, a certain cast, a certain temperature, and um, make it even more versatile to make it fit in with whatever color palette you're using, whether it be something moody and cool or warm and vibrant. This color right here is, oh, it's hard for me to pick a favorite, but this is definitely one of the top contenders for my favorite color. It's Morlone. It's a beautiful burgundy plum red color. Next is a potter's pink. It's a pretty standard color for most landscape palettes. Now we're finally getting to one of the new colors. This is Nocturno. I bought it because I love painting night landscapes and I want to get into them more. And I think this would be a beautiful color for the night sky and also for deep shadows in my, in my night scenes. The first blue I have on my palette is Zirconium Blue. This one granulates just beautifully, especially if you have a rougher textured paper. You don't get to see the full effect of it here because I didn't add as much water to it, but when you add water and make it more of a wash, it is just a gorgeous sky color. That other blue next to it is Lapis Lazuli, or Lapis Lazuli, depending on how you pronounce it. And then this blue that I'm painting here is my second new color, Midnight Blue. This was also purchased for more night themed landscapes, but also for water. This next blue is Indigo. I love, I love Indigo. Unfortunately, this one isn't as light fast, but that's okay. I still will use it um, if I know that I'm just gonna be printing prints of this piece. So I have a slight confession. This color is actually not an A Gallo color, although the actual pigment name is one of the names of the colors that was in this palette originally. It's Payne's Gray. But I use Payne's Gray so much in my paintings that I ran out of that color really, really quickly. And I ended up replacing it with a My Mary Blue Payne's Gray, simply because for the purpose of budgeting and keeping my costs low, I wanted to be able to easily use that color and not worry about you know it costing a whole lot of money and so I just bought a tube of my Mary blue and the color matches almost exactly I wanted to repurchase this color because it's another one of my favorites you can see the pan is almost empty but it was out of stock and I was really sad about it but this one is harbor blue it's more of a green than a blue in my opinion but oh my goodness it is just stunning and it's a good mixing color it's a good base and you can add other colors to it to slightly change the tone i use it constantly that beautiful little turquoise color is copper blue i don't use that one quite as much but i'd like to figure out how because it's such a pretty color 
Next to it is another one of my new colors. This one is deep sea green. I'm really excited to use this one in some of my misty forest scenes, but I also want to see what mixing capabilities it has. That green right there is another new color. That one is dark forest. And next to it is rare green earth, cool. Like I said earlier, I paint lots of trees and I like having variety in strength of color, tints of color, hue. <laughs> um, I like to mix up my forests and give them a lot of texture and variety. So having a bunch of different green shades in my palette is really helpful to me. This is another rare green earth color, but this one is rare green earth warm. And this color is the last new color that I added to the palette. I'm really excited about this one. This one is olive green deep. This is green gold. It's another one of my workhorses. I use it for mixes all the time. I typically don't use it on its own. It's a little bit too vibrant, too bright for my taste, but it's, again, it's one of my, my go-tos when I'm mixing greens. That next one is French ochre. I love using it for ground, for landscapes. It's a beautiful brown. And then after that is green ember. I think it's actually green ember brownish, if I remember correctly. <laughs> that very pale gray is slate gray. It has a slight green tint to it. It's a beautiful color. And then finally, we have Roman Black Earth. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope that it inspires you to put together your own custom watercolor palette.